Welcome to North Wales. This is the famous Cambrian Rally, and it's the first round of the 2019 Motorsport UK British Rally Championship. An all-star entry lined up in Clandudno Town Centre. Quite a dramatic sight, I can tell you. And with the key protagonists from last year's title fight back to do battle on the stages, drama is the word. Matt Edwards gets his title defence off the ground on home turf. David Bogey and Martin McCormack both have scores to settle. And then the likes of Tom Cave, Josh Moffat, Desi Henry, Alex Laffey will ensure that the bets are off for now. The lanes of Belgium, the hills of Scotland, the ditches of Killer Kilda, and two Irish rounds lying wait for the crews this season. But it all starts here in Wales on some iconic special stages. BRC. 2019 is go. Last year's British Rally Champion back out to begin his title defence on his home event. Having taken his first BRC victory at the opening round of last year's British Championship, Matt Edwards will be hoping for as good a start to this season. Very good, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, home stages, there's a bit of an advantage there, but I don't know how much of it you actually use to, to slow down for the bad bits as opposed to go fast in the good bits. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting day for sure. A former British rally champion, David Bogie's 2018 campaign started in a Kielder ditch. With the runner-up spot slipping away at last year's Wales Rally GB, Bogie has some scores to settle. You know, the last time we've done the event was 2015, so we managed to win the rally then. So, yeah, I like the stages, like the rally, so hopefully it'll be a good day. Alex Laffey is living proof that you need to be in it to win it. And at the final round of the series, Laffey took advantage of Bogey's woes to make it an M Sport 1-2. It's nice to have this much competition, so uh, it'll be good to see what we can do. Our gravel pace is still not where I'd like it to be, still needs work. Um, but hopefully we can get a decent result here and uh, move on to West, uh, West Court. Having had a quiet 2018 season with occasional outings, including Wales Rally GB, Tom Cave is a fairly unknown quantity among our current top flight in the British Rally Championship. And that makes him dangerous. Yeah, we've got a season confirmed for this year um, in the Hyundai R5, which is uh, really, really exciting for us. And new co-driver with Dale for the season. So, yeah, there's a couple of new challenges to tackle, but home rally for me, really, the Cambrian um, stages I know very well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to today. So our defending champion, Matt Edwards, leads a quality entry away from the town centre start in Llandidno. All looking to top the leaderboard, of course, at the end of the event and get those points on the board here at the opening round. 10 World Championship quality stages lie ahead of the cruise today, 52 miles in total. And it all starts with the tricky Klokainog stage. Five, four, three, two, one, go. 60, flat crest, the left back's long. 60, small crest, and a sudden two right minus. Being the home event for Matt Edwards and Patrick Walsh is a bit of a double-edged sword. Expected to go well on the familiar stages here, but that also adds pressure to perform. Thankfully for the pair, the feeling in the car was good. They opened up a small, but welcomed, I'm sure, five-second advantage after three stages. Second place at this stage would belong to this man, Tom Cave. Dale Bowen alongside this year. They went into the opening stage not fully expecting how slippery things would be. A couple of big moments would soon wake them up to that though. Five seconds, the gap to Edwards up ahead now. Slippy on that, yeah. David Bogie and John Rowan didn't feel that the opening stage had gone as well as it could. Too deep into the corners, the pair felt that they were losing speed. They did, however, briefly top the leaderboard after the first stage. Unfortunately, a puncture discovered after that stage would mean taking it easy on the next couple in the loop. They had to use their spare, of course. No room for error now. Third place for now, 1.5 seconds behind Cave. Any of the myriad of spectators lining the stages wouldn't deny that Marty McCormack and Barney Mitchell were trying visibly quick in that Skoda Fabia, but a few ambitious notes were causing them to scrub a few seconds here and there, ending the morning with fourth overall, two seconds back from Bogey. Four mod. Flat four left, half long, 100. Flat crest. 
After a season of mostly asphalt rallies, it was taking some getting back into the swing of things on gravel for Desi Henry and Liam Moynihan. The times, though, were looking good, and the pace was increasing as the morning went on. Fifth place for the pair going into service. It would be a fair assessment to say that some of our competitors didn't have as much experience on these stages as others. A fact that Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty were happy to admit was a good reason to take a steady approach to start the day. A good haul of points from this round would set them up nicely for round two in Ireland. When the ball was back in their court, they end the morning with sixth place as a result of that strategy. A puncture towards the end of stage three, thankfully not losing them too much time. There wouldn't be any problems to report for Johnny Greer and Kirsty Riddick, finding the stages slippery like many others were before them, but enjoying things to end the morning with seventh place on our leaderboard. A last minute decision to enter the championship saw a rush to change the car from tarmac to gravel spec in less than a week for Marion Evans and Jonathan Jackson. And this would be the first time driving the car on the loose. A few of the notes needed tweaking, but they would be happy with their start in eighth. Brendan Comiskey and Ronan O'Kane, meanwhile, would admit to being a little hesitant in places on the opening stages of the day. They do, though, pick up the pace over the next couple of stages, but they need to tidy things up to make any more places up on the leaderboard. And rounding out a top draw, top 10 at the end of the morning loop, would be Alex Laffey and Stuart Loudon. No problems for the pair, who still admit to needing a little more pace on the gravel events. Tom Preston and Andrew Roughhead end the morning just outside our top 10 with 11th place. Steady away on the opening stage of the day, but getting happier and more comfortable in the car. And the times were showing it as well as the morning went on. It would be a nice clean run through the opening loop of stages for Sasha Kakad and James Aldridge. They take it steady to end the morning with 12th. Sadly though, they put the car into a ditch soon afterwards. Their rally and their hopes of starting their championship campaign on a high coming to an end. So that meant at this stage it would be 13th place overall for Ender McCormack and Paul Sheridan. But with the loss of Kakad after service, the results were of course set to change. There'd be more frustration, this time problems for Alan Carmichael and Claire Williams, the car suffering with a misfire among other issues. Eventually the pair deciding that it was too much of a risk to continue, calling it a day just before the halfway point of the rally. So we are three stages down here in Wales and there's a different leaderboard for each stage. Edwards out in front by a slim margin. But with seven more stages to go today, anything could happen. And we've seen it before. A busy afternoon in store for our crews then. Four more stages after service, including a rerun through Clockinog and Alwyn. And over this loop of stages, the lead of the rally would remain the same. Matt Edwards and Patrick Walsh indeed extending their advantage at the top to just over 14 seconds now. Reaching the end of stage four, feeling like they had a puncture, but turning out just to be the slippery conditions. 14 seconds, let's not forget. A spin, a puncture, any problems whatsoever, and that time will disappear. Right, Max in. David Bogey and John Rowan were well aware that victory was still possible. But to do that, you still have to finish, of course. The shower of rain in the afternoon thankfully didn't affect the grip too much. The pair managing to work their way back into second place going into the evening stages. Welshman Tom Cave would be complaining of a lack of traction through these stages. He and Dale Bowen trying to change the setup on the Hyundai stage by stage to try and find that ideal setup for these conditions. The trouble was the stages were so different. They slipped back to third. Only 2.8 seconds though behind Bogey with three more stages remaining. Marty McCormack and Barney Mitchell meanwhile were still pushing hard. A little too hard in places. A small spin would mean that the pair had to reverse to get going again. Thankfully for them, only a couple of seconds lost at most. They end this loop of stages with that fourth place that they'd held coming out of the morning service. Desi Henry and Liam Moynihan would be another of our competitors to think that they had a puncture through stage four. 
the surface in there, providing a fresh challenge for the crews, clearly. Sadly, although the tyres were all OK, the flat shift wasn't. Trying to change gears using the clutch. Less than ideal in such a close-fought championship. Stage four would also give Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty one of these phantom punctures we keep hearing about. Relieved to get to the end of the stage then to find the tyres were all intact, but doing nothing for the confidence on these unfamiliar stages. They do though remain in sixth place on the leaderboard. It was still plain sailing for Johnny Greer and Kirsty Riddick. No problems to report, the stage is getting rough in places, but enjoyable nonetheless. They'd be happy to go into the nighttime stages with that seventh place overall, looking to gain whatever they could with those spot lamps blazing the way. One thing you don't want on the dashboard is a low fuel pressure warning. That was causing a bit of concern, understandably. Marion Evans and Jonathan Jackson Thankfully, though, it seemed to be okay. The car was running flawlessly other than the warning on the dash. They were certainly finding their feet as well now, faster through the repeat stages, even with the rain falling in places and understandably the stages becoming rough in places. Things were flowing nicely as well for Brendan Kamiski and Ronan O'Kane. The rain was causing them a little less grip, but they reached the end of the loop with ninth place overall. And rounding out the top 10 would still be last year's runner-up Alex Laffey and Stuart Loudon. Lucky to still be holding on to that position though after a puncture in stage 5, causing the pair to have to limp to the end of the stage and take some interesting lines in the process. Right by 40, short left 3 plus small cut, and right 4 minus 60. For Tom Preston and Andrew Roughhead, it wasn't a puncture losing them time. It was a wrong direction on one corner in the stage. Only losing a handful of seconds, would you believe? But it would certainly have been the difference between their 11th place overall or a place inside our top 10. Sensor problems on stage 6 with the car would slow Ender McCormack and Paul Sheridan a little. The problem going away for the next stage though, electrical gremlins is one thing you do not need going into night time stages. They end the afternoon with 12th place on the leaderboard. So it's spot lamps on atmosphere set to max. Going into the evening stages, it looks like it's Matt Edwards' event to lose. The pressure certainly on though with that battle for the podium places behind. Just three stages remaining for the crews then before the finish in Clandidno Town Centre, but the sting in the tail is that all three of these stages will take place in darkness. Problems for competitors up ahead would mean Ender McCormack and Paul Sheridan do enough to get to the finish, rounding out the top 10 leaderboard overall in the Fiesta. Something didn't feel quite right inside the car for Alex Laffey and Stuart Loudon in the final loop. The car oversteering a fair bit. They do make it through the stages and they make it back to the finish, importantly, with ninth place overall. After such a clean run, it was frustration for Johnny Greer and Kirsty Riddick. They do make it to the end of the stages, but a high water temperature warning on the dash and what turned out to be a burst radiator would prevent them from getting the car back to Glandidno for the finish. Tom Preston and Andrew Roughhead managed to overhaul Alex Laffey on the leaderboard in these final stages. The first time out in the forests in the dark for Tom, thankfully without any drama. Eighth place for the pair. And Brendan Comiskey and Ronan O'Kane would be happy enough with their run today, ending the rally with seventh place overall, putting some important points on the board to start their campaign. A puncture in the last loop of stages would be a frustrating way to lose a handful of seconds for Marion Evans and Jonathan Jackson. It didn't, though, ruin what was a pretty good result on the first round of the series for the pair. They end the day with sixth place on the leaderboard. Certainly glad that they put that late entry in for the championship. Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty, meanwhile, do what they need to do and get some valuable points on the board to start the season. With the second round heading over to their more familiar stages, the tables will turn. 
and they could be ones to watch for victory at round two. Desi Henry and Liam Moynihan get themselves to the end of what had been a pretty tough rally for the Skoda pair. It wasn't without its problems, but they do take away fourth place at the end of the rally. And the event may be into its final stages, but that wasn't stopping Marty McCormack and Barney Mitchell from pushing. They overdo it a little on stage eight, spinning the car on this corner. Marty had already had to have a word with himself before these three stages. Thankfully, no damage. The pair continue with minimal time loss to take the final step on our podium this weekend. Three left, break, right for a cut left. Right for a cut left now. And two right narrows, three left. So what about that podium fight then? With McCormack taking third, it meant that there was a name missing from the results. And unfortunately for Tom Cave and Dale Bowen, it was theirs. Two punctures in the final stages would mean the pair were unable to get that Hyundai back to the finish. And they'd be forced to end the rally at the stop line of the final stage. Excruciating for the pair. Puncture. Okay. Five right put. Five right shaft down into Titans. 90 down. It had been close at the top until this point, having lost their second place to Cave on the previous stages. It would be a bittersweet result at the end of the day for David Bogey and John Rowan. Happy, of course, to take back that second place to end the rally, but not at all the way they wanted the fight to end. The championship getting off to a much better start for them, though, than 2018, when they ended the first round upside down in a kill the ditch. But taking an emotional victory this weekend would be Matt Edwards and Patrick Walsh. Victory in front of a home crowd, certainly a long time coming for Matt. 15 years he's been watching and competing on this, his home event. This result here kick-starting that title defence as well in the best possible way. Maximum points for our defending champion. Well done, mate. So before we get reactions from the finish ramp in Clandidno, here's confirmation of those final results here at the opening round of the British Rally Championship. Championship points, of course, reflecting the leaderboard this weekend. Edwards leading the way with 25 points over Bogey and McCormack with 18 and 15 respectively. You had a dream come true last season, but this must be the dream come true for you. Home rally. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching it, you know, since I can remember. And, uh, you know, to do it the first time it's been BRC round and to do it with the top 10 that was out today, I didn't think it was possible, to be honest. And, you know, I just put some faith in the car, put some faith in the team and the, and, and the package that we had and just, just drove and like from the first stage it felt good and I just thought, you know what, I think we can do it. You said to us last night that when it came down to it you were going to consider the championship and you would settle for a podium. That was not settling for a podium. That was... <laughs> in front of the crowds, how does it feel? Uh, it's just amazing, you know, yeah, to do it on the, again, to achieve a dream come true on the, on the high street of where I've grown up is uh, it's something else. And, We've been pushed hard all day. We worked really hard for it all day. And okay, the event was a bit shorter than it should have been, but I'm glad it was. It was 58 miles that felt like 158. You know, the amount of pages of notes per mile was incredible. And to actually, you know, we haven't put a mark on the car. Uh, it's just something else. The drive of a champion. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers, Paul. Well, rally drivers always like it when it's a little bit easier. You didn't have it easy today, but what a fight you gave the spectators. Yeah, it's been a hard day, you know, hard stages. So, yeah, very pleased with second, you know. So, credit to Matt, he's driven well. So, look forward to West Court now. Yeah. Is that the plan for the championship? Are you going to keep pushing on? What's the plan? What are you thinking? Because, obviously, this time last year, you didn't have any points on the board. Yeah, it's a good start, you know. More than happy with second place. So, we need to go into West Cork now and, and push for a win. So, that's what we're going to focus on. Fighting talk from David Bogey. Of course. Marty, your championship campaign's off to a flyer with that one. Yeah, definitely. Wow, you know, we're really surprised to be in this position in, uh, in the Cambrian the rally we never did before. Um, we came here, I, I was, we didn't really get a look at things at all during the week, but we came here, we did a good recce on Friday. I was happy. My notes were been ambitious at times. We, we cleaned that up on Friday afternoon, the video, and we just drove to it today. And as I say, a bit wild in places, a bit, uh, we definitely had luck on our side a few times, but a really, really enjoyable day's rally and, and really challenging stages, but uh, a good event run by the club here and uh, Barney Mitchell is the first time sitting the BRC around with myself like uh, 
brilliant job in the notes and uh, Buckley did a great job with the car so look we had a faultless day really good day a couple of spins here and there but uh, very lucky to get away with spins well we've had it all here at the Cambrian split second fights for position flat out action from the start last minute dramas crowds here in London now town centre what a rally this first round has proved to be and what a prospect we've got ahead of us in the 2019 British Rally Championship it's off to a flyer next up it's over to Ireland for the West Cork stages. We'll see you then.